So for the 2014 AP Calculus AB for response number 5, we are given a table with f of x, f prime of x, g of x, and g prime of x uh, over the intervals negative 2 to 3 it seems. And we're given values for negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 3, and the positive versus negative for the function itself and their derivatives. Now reading number 5, it says the twice differentiable functions f and g are defined for all real numbers x. Values of f, f prime, g, and g prime for various values of x are given in the table above. So starting with part A, it says find the x coordinate, coordinate of each relative minimum of f on the interval negative 2, 3. Justify your answers. So if you remember, when we look for a relative minimum or maximum, of any function, we look at their derivatives and look at the slopes whether they're positive or negative. And if you remember, we have a minimum when the derivative goes from negative to positive. So part A asks of each relative minimum of f. So we're looking in this box right here. So if we look at this, we need to look for the intervals that go from negative to positive. Now from here to here, it goes from negative to negative. So that's just nothing. And from here, we go from negative to positive. So we actually have the x-coordinate of 1, because this is the number in between that where the slope equals um, 0 to where it changes from negative to positive. Or f prime of x equals 0, I'm sorry, which is a slope, I guess. <laughs> so the answer to part a will be the x value of 1. And the justification would be because f prime of x goes from negative to positive. Goes from negative to positive. So that was part A, which is pretty easy. I hope everyone can get that one. Uh, moving on to part B. It asks, explain why there must be a value c for negative 1 less than c less than 1 such that f double prime of c is equal to 0. Now, already looking at this question, I think of the mean value theorem, and in this case, I think of Rolle's theorem because it says f double prime of c is equal to 0. So if you remember Rolle's theorem, it says that if you have a continuous and differentiable function, um, and f of a is equal to f of b, then there must be some value c where f prime of c is equal to zero. And this actually applies to its derivatives as well. Since it's asking for f double prime, we can look at f prime and see its relationship between f double prime. And the reason why we can is because in the direction, it tells us that the twice differentiable functions so it tells us that this is twice differentiable, which makes it continuous on these points. So now, if we look at negative 1 is less than c is less than 1, we need to look at the values of f prime of negative 1 and f prime of 1. At f prime of negative 1, we have the value 0. At f prime of 1, we also have the value of 0. So since f of a equals f of b, we can conclude that this there must be a value due to Rolle's theorem. So I guess this would be easier if I type in a text box. By Rolle's theorem, since f is twice differentiable, f is continuous. Since f prime of negative 1 and f prime of 1 are equal, there must be some value c where f double prime of c is equal to 0 as well. And the reason why is because if you have a 
graph that is continuous where let's just make up a regular graph a generic graph I mean of let's say this let's say these two points are equal to each other and since this is a continuous and differentiable graph when we go from this point A to this point B it does not look like an A <laughs> we continuously go to the point B and no matter how you draw this graph because it's continuous no matter how you draw it as long as they go to the same point there must be at least one valley C in between where the slope is equal to zero because you could either have a straight horizontal line where the, where the slope is zero you can have a negative parabola where it goes up and down but the turning point will give you a zero you can have a positive parabola where that turning point will also give you zero but this is basically why Rolle's theorem works it's a uh, it's an it's a particular example of the mean value theorem or situation I should say and that is basically the answer to part B moving on to part C the question says the function h is defined by h of x is equal to natural log of f of x find h prime of 3 show the computations that lead to your answer so the function h is defined by h of x is equal to natural log f of x it's asking us to find h prime of 3 so the first thing that comes to mind is take the derivative of this so the the derivative which is h prime of x that's going to be equal to now the derivative of any natural log is 1 all over itself so 1 all over f of x and chain rule we have to multiply by the derivative of f of x which is f prime of x now because this question gave us tables we can use f we can actually use the table to solve for or to plug in the values of f of x and f prime of x now it's asking us to find 3 so instead of x we're looking for 3 so I actually should have written 3 instead but basically I can do this cut and cut and cut <laughs> so it's asking us to find h prime of 3 so I can plug in 3 here 3 here and 3 here so let's look for f of 3 we look at f we go over to where x equals 3 and it gives us the value 7 so 1 over f of 3 is 1 over 7 times f prime of 3 so we go to f prime look for the x value 3 which is here it tells us that the value is 1 half so the answer to part c is actually 1 over 14 that moving on to part d it asks us to evaluate the integral from negative 2 to 3 of f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx now automatically looking at this I can tell that you have to be familiar with your antiderivatives and derivatives because if you were to take the derivative of f of g of x you would get what they gave you because you would have the f you'd have the derivative equaling f prime of g of x times chain rule which is g prime of x so I can't really explain that I guess you could use u substitution but this is just basically if you understand antiderivatives and derivatives so it's asking us if you remember the fundamental theorem of calculus um, you basically take the antiderivative of whatever you have and you evaluate it with your limits so negative 2 to 3 and that's going to be and basically you evaluate it with by plugging in 3 and then subtracting and then plugging in 2, negative 2, and then subtracting negative 2 from that or whatever you got evaluated. So by looking at this we need to find g of x and we need to find g of 3. By regular function notation this means we need to find g of 3 and whatever that value is we need to find the f of that value. So g of 3 is right over here at negative 2 
Oh, I'm sorry, that's G prime. G of 3 is at 1. So we are looking for F of 1. So going to F of 1, which is right over here, we have F of 1 is equal to 2. So evaluating 3, we have 2 minus um, G of negative 2 is negative 1. So we're looking for f of negative 1. f of negative 1 is 8. So we have minus 8. And simply evaluating this, we have 2 minus 8, which is equal to negative 6. And that is the solution for part D, which completes this entire for your response question. Thank you for watching.